Hello guys, welcome to Study IQ. My name is Prashant Dhawan, and in this video, we are going to talk about the Lebanon crisis. A lot has been happening in Lebanon recently, so we shall discuss all that. But before discussing that, I want to tell you guys about Study IQ's pen drive and tablet courses that are available for various competitive exams like SSE exam, bank exam. UPSC exams we have a test series as well both in english and hindi language for UPSC aspirants and we have courses for various exams like CLAT DSSB you name it we have it just go to studyiq.com and you can purchase the course of your liking and you can study at home from india's best faculty or you can also call these numbers that you see on the screen and order your study iq pen drive or tablet course so this will be the format of our video first of all i will tell you guys about lebanon's history its geography where is it located all the other things that are important after that we shall discuss these questions why was lebanon's prime minister saad hariri so much in the news recently what happened in lebanon uh, what happened in saudi arabia and uh, then we shall discuss where does hariri the prime minister of lebanon figure in the saudi iran shia sunni conflict what is his role and then we shall discuss this very important question what is the role of hezbollah in lebanon and then we shall also talk about the role of the big western powers like us uh, european union what role do they have in lebanon so a lot to discuss let's start so where exactly is lebanon located as you can see this is our lovely india and if we go to the western side you will see pakistan then you have iran gigantic iran then iraq and then comes jordan and near jordan you will see israel and in the northern side of israel you will see this country this beautiful country called lebanon the capital of lebanon is beirut for a very long time beirut was called the paris of the east this was uh, a title that was bestowed on beirut because beirut was as beautiful as paris in a lot of ways and uh, well actually over the years a lot of uh, capitals around the world have been bestowed with this title the paris of the east uh, for example budapest uh, the capital of uh, hungary has also been uh, called paris of the east a lot of times so uh, just make sure you remember this now if you look at lebanon you will see that it is located near the mediterranean sea this is the mediterranean sea and this is lebanon and also it is located near israel it shares border with uh, syria a lot of geopolitical games are being uh, played in syria right now so strategically lebanon's position is quite important i always found lebanon to be a very interesting country because of the way uh, the government functions here in lebanon they have a certain form of running their government that is called confessionalism confessionalism is the mix of religion and politics lebanon is a democracy and if you look at all the democracies around the world what they all try to do is they try to separate religion from politics they try to keep religion away from politics as much as they can but in lebanon since there are 18 official religions they have accepted this diversity and they have ingrained their religion in their politics so in confessionalism what they actually do is uh, they make sure that all the government powers all the important government positions are equally distributed between the major religious sects of the country so that everyone feels that they are represented in the highest level Muslims are a majority in Lebanon there are 27% Sunni Muslims and 27% Shia Muslims and then there are 35% Christians and also there are 11% Druze well uh, Druze is basically an 11th century religion uh, that emerged from Shia Islam the exact number of Druze in Lebanon isn't really known because the last population census that occurred in Lebanon was in the 1930s but it is estimated that there are somewhere between 5% to 10% druze in lebanon if you look at lebanon's flag it it sort of looks like a, a christmas stamp but uh, it has a very serious meaning the white represents peace and the red represents the blood that ha that has been spilled for lebanon's freedom and the tree this represents lebanon's survival that even though lebanon had to face a lot of uh, difficult times it is still standing it is still surviving and and of course it uh, will keep surviving in the near future as well lebanon's location on the map is strategically very important and that is the reason why lebanon has been attacked by various foreign invaders throughout its history the first mass invasion of uh, lebanon was in uh, 332 bc by alexander the great 
At that time, he attacked Lebanon City Tyre, T-Y-R-E. Right now, it is the fourth largest city in Lebanon, but at that time, attacking Tyre was considered a very bold move by Alexander the Great. And uh, I strongly suggest you read about uh, Lebanon's invasion by Alexander. It took uh, Alexander a lot of months to actually capture Lebanon, and it was a very important invasion for his overall conquest of the Middle East. So after Alexander's invasion in uh, 332 BC, in uh, 1516 AD, the Ottoman Empire invaded Lebanon and they stayed in power in Lebanon for a lot of centuries. They stayed in power till the end of World War I, till 1918. As you know, World War I ended in 1918 with the defeat of the Ottoman Empire and the empire disintegrated and because of that, Lebanon got to taste freedom after centuries. But that freedom was very short-lived because in uh, 1920, the League of Nations granted the mandate for Lebanon and Syria to France, which then created State of Greater Lebanon. The State of Greater Lebanon was basically a country that had some part of Syria as well. So they called it Greater Lebanon. So uh, after uh, the Ottoman Empire's rule, France started ruling Lebanon. And uh, that rule lasted for a few decades until Hitler decided to invade France and uh, Hitler pretty much occupied France. So in 1943, the foundations of the state were set out in an unwritten national covenant, which used the two, uh, which used the 1932 census to distribute seats in parliament on a ratio of six to five in favor of Christians. Now look, uh, as uh, Hitler invaded France and captured France, uh, France pretty much had no option but to just sit and watch Lebanese independence struggle flourish. And eventually, the people of Lebanon decided that they do not want to stay under French rule. And since France was under the Nazi Germany rule, there was not much France could do about it. So Lebanon declared itself an independent country in 1943. And uh, since Lebanon had a lot of religions, they decided to distribute the power, the number of seats in the parliament, uh, between various uh, religions. This formula kept on changing as the uh, population uh, of uh, Lebanon kept on changing over the years. But uh, initially, the 1932 census was responsible for this uh, unique confessionalism style of government that Lebanon is known for. So under this uh, unique system of confessionalism, the president of Lebanon was always going to be a Maronite Christian. This was written in the constitution and the Prime Minister was always going to be a Sunni Muslim and the Speaker of the Chamber was always going to be a Shia Muslim. So this way, all the three factions, the major factions of uh, Lebanon, they were satisfied and they were given equal power. So the people of Lebanon declared themselves citizens of an independent country in 1943, uh, 22nd November of uh, 1943 and after a few days in 1944, 1st of January 1944, the government of uh, France agreed to transfer the power to the Lebanese government and uh, then the Lebanon nation, the nation of Lebanon was formed. But as I told you earlier, Lebanon was always a place of people from various religions and when there are so many divisions between people, there are so many differences, there is bound to be infighting, there is bound to be a civil war. And uh, that happened between uh, 1975 to 1990. Lebanon was uh, thrown into a very uh, gruesome civil war. A lot of people died in Lebanon because of that. Now, it all happened in 1967 June. You see, uh, in 1967, there was a war between the Arab countries and Israel that Israel eventually won. Lebanon had absolutely no active part in that war. But the aftermath of that war affected Lebanon greatly because after the war ended, a lot of Palestinian people who lived in Israel, they fled to Lebanon and they made bases on Lebanese soil and they used those bases to attack Israel. This started from the June 1967 and this continued for uh, at least two decades. And Israel had absolutely no option but to just uh, wait patiently 
and uh, just to tell the Lebanese government to take actions on these terrorists that were attacking uh, Israel from uh, the Lebanese uh, soil. But uh, Israel lost patience in 1982. Well, uh, actually, there was also a certain event that triggered a Israeli invasion of Lebanon. That uh, that certain event was the attempted assassination of the Israeli ambassador to Britain by a Palestinian splinter group that was, of course, based in Lebanon. So because of that, Israel launched a full-scale invasion of Lebanon, not to d destroy Lebanon as a country, but to just destroy the bases, the terrorist bases in Lebanon that were being used by the Palestinians to, to attack the people in Israel. So then Israeli invasion started and this lasted and this lasted for at least uh, two decades until the year 2000 when the Israeli government decided to withdraw from Lebanon because the mission was largely unsuccessful. The Israeli military was uh, pretty much uh, successful in defeating the Palestinian terrorists in Lebanon but they were not able to destroy Hezbollah. You see in 1982 when Israel invaded Lebanon the uh, nation of Iran decided that it will start funding the Shia population in Lebanon that wanted to fight against the Israeli armed forces. So that was the birth of Hezbollah. Hezbollah was basically a terror outfit, is basically a terror outfit that is funded by the Iranian government and it functions in Lebanon and uh, its uh, and its main objective is to uh, throw out uh, the Israeli people from uh, Lebanon and of course to contain Israel as well. And right now in uh, 2017, uh, uh, Hezbollah is very much active in Lebanon. They have their own radio show, they have their own TV show, they uh, try to spread their propaganda and uh, lure more youngsters in their uh, extremist ideology and uh, it, they even have uh, certain politicians in Lebanon, they have seats in their parliament so it is a very powerful group in Lebanon and even the Lebanon government has absolutely no control on uh, Hezbollah, they pretty much do whatever they want to do. Now you understand that Hezbollah is basically a geopolitical tool by the Iranian government to further its interests in Lebanon and of course stand up against the Israeli government. Now let's talk about the recent affairs, what exactly happened recently. As I record this video on 29 November 2017, Saad Hariri is still the Prime Minister of Lebanon. He is a Sunni Muslim. Obviously, as I told you, uh, there is a um, formula in Lebanon that the Prime Minister shall always be a Sunni Muslim. The uh, the speaker of the chamber uh, shall always be a Shia Muslim and of course the president shall always be a uh, Maronite uh, Christian. Now, uh, Saad Hariri, what he did on 4th of November was he went to Saudi Arabia. He had a discussion with King Salman of Saudi Arabia and after the discussion, he suddenly decided to resign from his post of Prime Minister in Saudi Arabia. This was very odd because if a Prime Minister of a certain country wants to resign because of any reason, then he most probably does it in his own country. Now why did Saad Hariri decided to go to Saudi Arabia and over there he decided to uh, tell the entire world that he feels unsafe? Well, his rationale for uh, resigning from the post of Prime Minister was that Hezbollah, the Iran-backed terrorist organization in uh, Lebanon, uh, will kill him and uh, that is uh, going to uh, cause and that is the reason why he is uh, running away from Lebanon and he has also resigned from the post of Prime Minister as well and he also criticized Iran. He says that Iran is interfering in the internal matters of Lebanon and so on and so forth. Now this is what happened. Now let's analyze. Let's uh, try to understand what could have triggered the, this uh, decision by Saad Hariri. Well, first of all, we need to understand that Mr. Saad Hariri has dual citizenship. He is a Saudi Arab citizen and he and he is obviously a Lebanese citizen since he uh, is the Prime Minister there. Now, Saad Hariri's father, Rafiq Hariri, was killed in 2005 in a car bombing and uh, Hezbollah, the Iran-backed terror outfit in uh, Lebanon, was held responsible for it. And uh, he believes that Hezbollah is after his life as well and uh, they will kill him just like they killed his father. Now let me tell you about uh, Mr. Hariri's business interests in Saudi Arabia. You see, uh, Mr. Hariri, Saad Hariri's father, Rafiq Hariri, he opened a company in Saudi Arabia in 1975. The name of that company was Saudi Ogre. 
Saudi Ogre was a construction company and uh, it is believed that it was in cahoots with the Saudi government. Whenever the Saudi government uh, wanted to build some roads or build some infra project in some new city, the tender was automatically automatically given to Saudi Ogre and there was absolutely no bidding whatsoever. It seemed rather odd how uh, such a powerful man, uh, the Prime Minister of Lebanon, has a company and the company automatically is given tender by the Saudi government. So, so it, it was obviously a very clever scheme by the Saudi government and of course Saad Hariri's father Rafiq Hariri to earn a lot of money and uh, that's what Saad uh, Rafiq Hariri did. He basically borrowed money from Saudi banks and the money was given to him on very low interest rate. He constructed roads there the and he uh, earned the profit and he gave back uh, the interest and the loan to the uh, to the banks in Saudi Arabia and then you know overall eventually after a few decades uh, Rafiq Hariri became a multi-billionaire. Saad Hariri too is a multi-billionaire. He's a very rich man thanks to his father's company Saudi Ogre. Now things were going fi fine uh, till uh, 2010 when the oil prices were very much high but after the oil prices started plummeting the Saudi Arabia government did not have enough money to fund all the projects that Saudi, or Saudi Ogre was going to work on in Saudi Arabia. So eventually Saudi Ogre started to suffer losses and uh, they had to close down their operations and the company actually closed down in 2017. Uh, but uh, the Saudi Ogar company still owes the Saudi Arabia banks 3.2 billion dollars. That's a lot of money. So perhaps since Saad Hariri's former company Saudi Ogar owns the Saudi government this much amount, perhaps the Saudi Arabia government just want to tell him that he needs to pay back their money and, he does, and if he does not do that, then they will withdraw their support and he will seize to become the Prime Minister of Lebanon or perhaps uh, look uh, after he resigned uh, from uh, the post of Prime Minister in Saudi Arabia he went to Egypt then he went to France then he went back to his own country on 22nd of November the Independence Day of uh, Lebanon and over there the Prime Minister of uh, Lebanon Mike, uh, Michael Oum who is uh, a Christian he asked Saud Hariri to take back his res resignation and he did that. So perhaps Saudi Arabia government is uh, still willing to give him one more chance to pay back their debts. Now this is one theory. The second theory is that uh, Saad Hariri is not taking uh, hard stringent action against Hezbollah that is uh, working in his own country and the Saudi Arabia government want him to do that. So perhaps by making him resign on their soil they have sent a signal to the entire uh, political party of Saad Hariri and of course Saad Hariri himself that if he does not take any stringent action against Hezbollah he will not get the support that he has been getting from the Saudi Arabia government. So this is how we can analyze the whole situation either it is uh, the debts that he owes to the Saudi banks or the fact that he is not taking action against Hezbollah or perhaps both of the reasons that were responsible for his resignation on Saudi soil. Now what can be the future? Well anything actually right now uh, Lebanon is in a very fragile situation and anything can happen. One thing is for sure that uh, the Prime Minister of uh, Lebanon Hariri will have to be very hard on Hezbollah and uh, that will obviously trigger counter reaction as well. If he starts to take action against Hezbollah the Iran backed terror outfit then of course uh, Iran will start funding Hezbollah even more and that game will keep on being played back and forth. Uh, there, will, there will be no end. Only the people of Lebanon, the civilians of Lebanon will suffer. And of course, President Donald Trump uh, is also backing Saudi Arabia's policy in Lebanon. Uh, Donald Trump too believes that Saudi Arabia should arm twist uh, Hariri so that he takes more stringent action against Hezbollah. Now, as I told you earlier, Iran will probably fund Hezbollah and not just Iran, we might even see Russian Federation support Hezbollah because Hezbollah is also very much active in Syria and Russia has pretty much supported Hezbollah in Syria. So we might even see the Russian Federation supported, supporting Hezbollah in Lebanon as well. Now, this could eventually lead to another civil war in Lebanon and we all hope that does not happen because eventually, uh, the big billionaires, people like Hariri, they don't suffer. Only the normal, the common man who just wants to live in peace, that person suffers. So 
this is a, this is the state of the affairs in Lebanon. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something new. And if you did, make sure to like this video and share it on WhatsApp, Facebook, or wherever you can. Thanks for watching. God bless you all.